Okay, so I just wanted to uh, very quickly show you guys what I've gotten myself into here with this. Um, this is very encouraging, what I've done so far. Um, I haven't really had a lot of time because I got into a painting project on one of the rental properties. But I wanted to get out here and run this 60 degree cutter. Uh, through this blank that I was using or that I had started out with I, almost a week ago, I guess it was. Um, I know it's going to be hard for it to show up on camera, but from here to here, this is all, these teeth are all teeth that I've touched with the 60 degree cutter. Basically what I've done is I just kissed this surface and kissed this surface on each side uh, with the 60 degree cutter. I couldn't go, well I didn't want to go in deeper as I would have wound up with a very sharp point, you know, way back here. So I just raised and lowered well you know it's sitting in the machine like this i just raised the cut excuse me lowered the cutter and raised the cutter until i got um and a width here that i was satisfied with and um i don't know how well that's going to show on camera it's pretty darn decent um, it's, it's a pretty decent match from the factory original to what I've been working with here. Obviously, it's not perfect, and it's not meant to be perfect. And um, actually, oh, um, the Eddies even made a suggestion that I had never considered. And that would be like, if I needed to make a gear that was really accurate in the future, conceivably, I could buy the proper gear tooth cutters and then when i'm done with them just resell them i don't know why i never considered doing that before but that's a darn good idea for sure but as it stands i think this is this has definitely got the potential to get me there so far, this is just with, very crudely, with a 60-degree cutter and a 90-degree cutter. So, this can def this can still yet be improved upon. And while, obviously, it probably wouldn't sound perfect in use, this would transfer power from one gear to another, if need be. Um, one other thing is, I had also contemplated depending on the type of gear that I choose to build or need to build in the future, I could also come back and hit this area here with a, um, a ball nose uh, milling bit to get some round there. And let's see here. I don't know if it'll really show up very well or not. Anyways, between the 60 degree face and the 90 degree face, obviously there's going to be a um, an angular transition here. I had also considered, depending on there again, how good of a gear I need to make, I could come back through after milling these and hit them with a file to smooth out that transition and... Of course, I could even go on these edges, uh, these corners, these outboard corners, and do the same thing. Hit them with a file, hit them with a Dremel tool, uh, something to very easily um, round off those sharper, well, sharp-ish corners. But th this is working well enough for probably most of the purposes that I'm ever going to have for gears. I 
think I can see a way to do this without having to buy involute cutters. So, I mean, this was, this was the whole point of this experiment, was to just see if it's possible, or see if I'm, you know, just beating my head against the wall, but, and that's just with a 60 and a 90. Uh, depending on the types of gears I need to build in the future, I might consider adding a 45 degree cutter and or a 30 degree cutter also to get, you know, to smooth, smooth these transitions out as it goes through, you know, through the shape of the gear tooth. So anyways, I, I just wanted to, you know, follow up on what I was doing. Just in case anybody was interested in this little, this particular little project. So I will, uh, this will probably be the end of this for a while until I actually really need to build a gear. So anyways, I'll uh, catch up with you guys later.